you rock and roll, man. Whenever you are, you don't want the one to come in here and do this. And we're off. <laughs> Welcome to your new favorite NBA podcast. It's yet to be named. We're going to be naming it later in this podcast. My name is Greg Polar. I'm here with my good friend Jonathan Rollins. What's up, man? Best producer in the business. I try my best. <laughs> um, and uh, we're doing this well. Actually, John asked me why we're doing this yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the way in. Yeah. And um, <laughs> as you know, I'm an I'm an unabashed, uh, unashamed NBA fan. NBA, huh? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> NBA. And keep it real, man. And I fe- felt like you know we should really get ahead of this podcast medium. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be first. Why not be first? You know, before the the landscape gets too crowded, we should really jump on it and uh. um, strike before the iron gets hot. Um, <laughs> Smart man. No, but I I've I am a huge NBA fan, fanatic, which you know, fan is I know, short yeah. for. I see you in the group chat, man. Uh, yeah, we have a group chat and NBA NBA assholes. NBA NBA assholes. NBA holes. <laughs> NBA holes is better. I've always thought yeah. that, but y'all call uh, it NBA assholes. Um, that's right. We should change the name of that. Um. And for me, I'm just I'm constantly looking for uh, NBA podcasts and 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 really dissatisfied with with what's out there. I, I feel like there's well, there's a, a lot of nerds and losers, mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, instead of self reflecting and thinking, am I one of them? I am I'm <laughs> preferring to think I'm better than them. You are, and can do this better. Okay. So, um, so it's for entertainment. This so is you for, wanna, well, I'm trying to do you, it like I, uh, for me. Making a the, podcast the, you want to hear. Exactly. I, I, right. That's the most narcissistic thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm making a podcast that I can listen to on my way home. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is for me. Yeah. This is just for me. Um, mm-hmm. No, I do feel like the, the NBA podcasts that, uh, you know, that are out there, uh, and I'm sure there's some great ones that I'm missing, mm-hmm. but um, focus a little bit too much on. I don't want to say negativity, but you know, as a fan, you want you want hope. You know, you, you, you want you you want to tune in and give some. You want to hear the best case scenario. Do you know the mm-hmm. Josh Gondelman? He's an American comedian. He's been here in Sweden a couple of times. We're both Americans living in Sweden. Mm-hmm. As a backstory, um, I don't know uh, Josh Gondelman. Though. Yeah, he's like he's a he was, I performed with him a while back here in Stockholm. He's he's this, he's a great guy and really a, a great comedian who's his career has kind of taken off, but he, he focuses really on positivity. Mm-hmm. Um, even on Twitter, he does this little, these like pep talks to people if they're feeling down. And stuff. Really? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and he's, he's, uh, and he's beloved by everyone because of that, you know, and it's great to see him doing well, but I would like for this podcast to, to, to have some of that, to mm-hmm. have some, okay. uh, can I interject? Sure. <laughs> You're going to say, is this, are you sure I'm talking to the right guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying, I'm saying, yeah, I don't experience you as yeah. a very positive person. Well, I'm trying to change that, John, with this podcast. <laughs> okay. No. I in, in sports world, I'm a sport, the reason why I, and, and believe me, for many years I was almost in the closet as a sports fan because, you know, there is a, there is a period of your life when it's not exactly the coolest thing to be very much into sports. Okay, um, I, I don't feel like Okay, you're not free. You've been cool your whole life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I love about sports is the unpredictability of it. I mean, the fact that, that you know, you don't know. And there's, there's a certain, in, in many podcasts or just pundits in general, people who are analyzing sports, they tend to focus on, you know, this certainly is going to, this team is going to win. This team can't win, you know, um, mm. it, with the certainty of, whereas the unpredictability of it, I think, is what sports is, is, should be about and the, and the narrative uh, and that's what I'm really after is trying to figure out what is the narrative uh, for each team. And that's what I love about it. And, and, and like, for example, like every team, I, I think every team in this, in this, in the, it, that's alive right now has a chance to win the title. There is a path for every team to win the title. I okay. never hear that. G- give me, like, give me, give me a team. I'll give you, I'll give you their path. Uh, San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> 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 What's their path? It's gonna, Go. It's going to be harder. <laughs> I was assuming you were going to give me one of the without a time teams, machine. You don't I, need a time machine. Hold on, I accept the challenge. Okay. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs okay. path to the 2024 NBA championship. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a terrorist attack. <laughs> Wow, right? you went immediately dark. Hey, I'm trying to find a way. Yeah. <laughs> Positivity, um, man. There is a bomb at half court, I guess, of all the games. 
right? Play, no, no, so Every that, game. That won't work because the no. first game they would, yeah, the security would be tight after yeah. that. Okay, it's going to have to be targeted strikes <laughs> against every player in the playoffs. So you're hearing, uh, you know, news reports. Oh, my God, Kevin Durant was taken down. <laughs> and then LeBron, one by one. You can, one oh my, by it's one, every, yeah. It's everyone. You know, it's kind of like a 9-11. Well, how feeling. would they get in the playoffs, though? No, no, they're, get, they're getting these guys at their homes. There's a terrorist. I alert. mean, the Spurs, how do they I'm get, get in Hold the on, play- hold okay, on. This okay. is just step one of my plan. <laughs> my plan. <laughs> Watch how you say that. <laughs> I'm just trying to give these people hope. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so there's a terrorist attacks targeted all the players. There's a, there's a terrorist organization that realizes, hey, America's, you know, one of their favorite pastimes is NBA basketball. Let's, let's squash this playoff thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Let, let's say they don't kill them. They just may, they maybe just cut their Achilles, you know? Mm. Okay. <laughs> More humane. This is <laughs> cut their Achilles. Because I know m- most terrorist organizations are measured in their yeah. in their responses. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they so they they do that. They cut the Achilles of all the all the players. Every every player, every player's Achilles cut. Achilles is cut. <laughs> Man. Right? Okay. Playoffs cancel. Terrorists about to win. Last minute. The president and the commissioner Adam Silver come together and they say we can't let this happen. Let's go all the other teams. Mm, Let's have a tournament them. with all yeah. the other teams okay. and show them that America's back and they can't take us down like this, right? Okay. Victor Wembanyama was in France during this, this <laughs> attack. Uh, naturally. <laughs> uh, sadly, his very tall pool boy got taken down mistakenly. <laughs> Achilles <laughs> He's done for. He's walking around with a limp. <laughs> with a boot. <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh, and the, and then the, so they have this tournament and the Spurs win and uh, yeah they're they're your twenty twenty four champions. Terrorists okay. don't win. Spurs win. What about? Okay. So what I'm saying is there's now if there are Spurs fans listening, I, I do not want. Please do not do that. Um, yeah. Of course, we're not condoning that. Uh, yeah. Right? And the Spurs pool boy, watch out. Yeah. Um, but some, what I'm saying is there is. Can you give me another fucking team? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no. All right. I, I should admit that I'm a Celtics fan, and that's another reason why. It's waiting on it. <laughs> why I wanted to do this podcast. Um, I do think the hmm. sports podcast landscape needs another Boston centric. Uh, <laughs> well, it won't um, be Boston centric. I wouldn't be a part of that. Well, I'm going to try to make it Boston centric. <laughs> I'm a Heat fan, by the right. way. John's from Miami, so we have that thing going on. This mm. uh, this potential first round matchup. Um, but that's another reason why I wanted to do this is, is my, my two sons are uh, teenagers now, and we watch mm. every and game hopers. together, mm. um, every Celtics game, and have for years now. You know, and and, and I, I do think you know, as Americans living abroad, we should get more credit for you know, the amount of, of, of effort we put mm-hmm. into our Takes sports effort, watch, bro. watch. With no. the six-hour time difference. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying we need championship rings, but I'm not not saying that either. <laughs> Especially like in the like in the finals and stuff. Yes, I mean it's getting like, up it's and then the you hoping like it goes to West Coast games. Yeah, oh, so totally. you can just get up early and watch. And it. I always yeah. see these like you know they have days off. It'd be people like, wow, LeBron must be so tired after these games. I'm like, I'm, like, hey, I'm what about tired. Me? I gotta go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on two hours sleep every game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout um, out to the to the fans in, around the world. So, so for me, I, I, I one of the reasons that I wanted to do this podcast is, is I I I really believe in this Celtics team. I think it's one of the best teams of all time at this point. Wow. Uh, of course. The it, best Celtics teams of all time. I'm times. talking the best NBA best team. Best NBA team of all time. Yes. Now, I think they, no have, a bias. Ch- they, they have a chance to become that. Um, they need to win it all, though. Of course they need to win it all. In fact, I think they need to go 16-0 and 0 in the playoffs to, mm. to get best team status. And I'm not ruling that out, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is my best case scenario. I said we were talking uh, about positivity. Uh, all right. Um, but, but one of the reasons I, one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast is uh, with to, ha- me. to have a record, uh, and we, we, you know, it, with uh, of this uh, this see, this uh, glorious Celtic season that will that will go down in history, uh, and, okay. and 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 this season means more to me than any other because I think it's the last year my oldest son will be in the house, and this is our last chance to you know as a family celebrate oh. a championship together. I just decided I want to get a soundboard. <laughs> I want to hook up the soundboard. It's just like boo, <laughs> boos and violins. Oh, it's gonna be. Yeah, this is gonna get entertaining. Don't ruin my family moment. Uh, <laughs> Throw the family I, in there, bringing the kids up to. <laughs> they deserve this championship as much as anyone. <laughs> to get out of there. Uh, 
<laughs> but for the Celtics, you know, briefly, it doesn't take much to give them the, the, to to think of what their best case scenario is. It's one of the best starting fives yeah. in the history of basketball. It really is. Uh, I know you're you're sh- you're shaking your head, but it is. There's you know the, the, their fifth best starter is who Drew Holiday or mm. or Derek White, both you know, yeah. borderline all stars. Drew Holiday probably a Hall of Famer. Um, if you look at the great lineups in history, the 86 Celtics, um, the, uh, the Warriors of whatever, 17, 18, they usually have one guy who kind of stinks, you know, a fifth guy who's not a star. Mm-hmm. You know, 86 Celtics, you had Danny Ainge, uh, who's just okay. Robert Parrish, one of the most overrated players, I think, in, uh, in Ooh, wow. basketball history. Uh, wow. He's, you know, longevity, 13 points a game, nice player, but not to the level of Bird and McHale. Uh, and then the Warriors had this one. Who's their fifth? They had like Looney or something, you know. There's, there's mm. usually a weak spot. This, this Celtics team has no weaknesses. In no weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing some sarcasm. I'm just looking at the roster right there. Yeah. I mean, the just rest going of, through the roster. Is pretty a lot weird. of white guys there, by the way. That's Boston's uh, ah, staple right there. There it is. <laughs> That's how you keep the fans happy. <laughs> I almost... I almost wrote down and put in my in my pocket like the the over under at what time you bring up the Boston's races. <laughs> Where we at? Where we at? At uh, around thirteen minutes. I made 13, it pretty far, yeah. man. I, I was gonna put down like three minutes and twenty seconds. <laughs> Are you gonna uh, speaking of that? Yeah. I don't want to derail you at all uh, from this Boston uh, love fest, but mm-hmm. uh, where are you at on um, talking about gambling? Are you staying away from stuff like that? As we, as we do this, like, what do you mean? It's on the podcast? Or yes, yes, on the podcast. I'm not talking about. Why would I be staying? Why, why am I scared to gamble? Really? I'm not scared. To, I'm talking about. Is that going to be a part of this? Oh. Are we going to talk about uh, uh, over under? Like you just talking. You just mentioned over under. I mean, that seems to be really. something that has gotten involved in sports so much yeah. so soon, so quickly. I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying to make. I'm trying to demonetize this podcast and make it as as. Yeah, that's just what I want, man. <laughs> As as few people as possible listening to this. <laughs> uh, if you want to, then, no, then you I, talk I, a bunch of games. Well, I will give. I mean, we, I think I I will be giving my picks, um, in which I'm, I'm I think I'm eighty five percent, ninety percent in le- my lifetime on. <laughs> no, I, <don't> know <laughs> I remember last year you were picking the uh, yeah. Celtics to a historical couple. You are a positive guy when it comes to that stuff. Yes, and it almost happened. See, last year. See, here's another thing about this Celtics team, and I know I'm going. I'm, I'm all over the place right now. That's okay. But a lot of people, you know, they, they do have the label as, as kind of chokers at this point. I would say they're the national, you know, uh, consensus. I know um, Barkley and Shaq, and uh, they're all kind of piling on. You know, they, they, they prove it to me. Not, they don't believe in this team, even though they have 64 wins and have been crushing teams all year long. And uh, I, I think it's a little bit undeserved, this, this choking. I mean, last year. What, what, okay, keep going. Last, last year, year, as you know, mm-hmm. uh, 3-0, Heat was up, right? What's the the Heat Celtics match. Just the Heat, the play in Heat. Okay. <laughs> the eight seed Heat. Right? Okay. Okay. Eight seed Heat. They win. The heat win the first three games. Mm-hmm. Celtics come storming back. Come storming back. And I told you this was going to happen. You said no. You told me it they were going happen. to win it all. They were. You were like they okay. were zero and three. Right. And you said we're going to make history and yes. win four in a row. Okay. And here's what happened. Mm-hmm. We won three in a row. Right, I know. And then in the seventh game, in one minute into the game, Jason Tatum turns his ankles out for the game. I mean, is that a choke or is that just bad luck? Mm. I propose that it's bad luck, sir. <laughs> and they were one missed, turned ankle the away from The choke part winning. is probably getting down 0-3. Well. Is what they're saying. I'm not saying, it's, I'm not saying it myself. I was shocked, pleasantly surprised, of course, as a Heat fan, but we, we there was there were times, you got to under, you got to, Feel the narrative but there when people a, are saying that these guys disappear. Sure, sure. but there is a narrative and Jalen where if, if if Tatum doesn't turn his ankle, that they come. It's the greatest and comeback historic, in history. Yeah. The refs were really and trying to make beat, it happen, and then they beat Denver, and, and we were celebrating. And, we, oh, and my, oh, yeah. my family has that celebration at home. That we're, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that we so deserve. <laughs> <laughs> that we so deserve. Oh man. So that's. I mean, I I, I think this this Celtics team doesn't. Even, the thing about th- about this team is they have so many weapons that they don't even need. I mean, and even if Tatum does kind of play how he's played in the past. And by the way, I think Tatum has an undeserved reputation as, as a choker. He's fifty points in Game Seven yeah, they against did this to LeBron against Philly last year. They did this and to was LeBron, about man. to do it to Miami before he turned his ankle. I'm convinced of that yeah. first drive. He looked really good going to the basket. <laughs> 
Um, they did it to LeBron too, man. But it happens thing, to the stars. But here's here's where here's where which gives me some pause is that uh, intuitively I think this team is so loaded that they don't even need for him to be that great. He can just be okay. They have you know they have Porzingis, Holiday, White, Jalen Brown to pick him up if if need be. But NBA history tells you that usually your superstar has to deliver. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I will say I have you know, maybe 1% of, of worry slash negativity creeping in mm-hmm. in that respect. I get and that. And what gives me the biggest pause is the fact that I think the only two teams that I'm really worried about in the East are the 7-8 seeds, Philadelphia and the Miami, your Miami Heat. Mm, okay. And unfortunately, we're filming this now, uh, which the get that game is tonight, uh, Philly versus the Heat, 7-8. Mm-hmm. So we don't know how that's going to end. Um, but either of those teams is kind of a disaster first round matchup, I think, for the Celtics in the sense that they're both better than their record. All right. I would say, you know, the Sixers, Happens, yeah. Sixers, I think, are thirty three and eight or something with Embiid. Now that he's back, I mean, you know, mm. there, there's an argument that they're the second best team in the East. Um, so it would be really not a shame, but I don't know. I'm one of those. They're thirty three and eight with him. Yeah. They were second or third in the, in the <laughs> forty-seven and thirty-five. Wow! Yeah. They were like second and third, second I that's think a, in the in the East before he got. That's injured. a fake seven C, right, man? Exactly. And um, hmm. I'm not one of the. I don't know how you are as a fan, but you know, a lot of fans, a lot of people I know, they say we we want the tough teams. We, you know, we want to. We no. Be, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the exact no, I want the easy same. route. I was like, I want the. Exactly. <laughs> I don't root for injuries at all. Yeah. I kind of root uh, for injuries as well. I guess. Really? I mean, I, I don't root for them when they happen. I'm it's kind of secretly. Like, yeah, but I don't root for point. the injury. Mm. I do say stuff like, rest that. <laughs> <laughs> rest it. Rest it. Well, yeah. Your team can handle it without you until you get That's back. That's where I think the, um, you know, the uh, Toronto Raptors in the finals against Golden State, if, well, I don't know how many years ago that was. Now. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, when Kevin Durant got injured, you know, the Toronto fans just started like quietly cheer. You heard yeah. like cheers. Yeah. And they got a lot of shit for that. But like, I, I, I re- you know, that impulse yeah. when you're a fan of more like, just like a. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. We don't want it to be career ending. <laughs> oh, but we want it to be series ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean there. So uh, as far as positivity goes in the Eastern Conference scenarios for teams can win. Philadelphia again. We just we just gave it. I mean the the MB, maybe they're the best team with Embiid. You know maybe he comes back. Mm. I don't think he's close to one hundred percent healthy. But if he is, they could make a run. Bro, it's a lot of Boston talk right now, man. I'm not. I'm, I'm Embiid. With this. I'm on to Philly. No, you're talk. Okay, so you're not saying you're not talking about the matchup Boston versus. No, I think Philly's going to win the game against the Heat. Okay. They're going to play the Knicks. Okay. I think Philly could beat the Knicks pretty easily with Embiid. Okay. I think uh, the Bucks. Also, then that'll put the heat. Also, okay. The Bucks. I mean, have looked awful down the stretch, especially with Doc Rivers as coach. But there is that narrative, you know, of Doc Rivers got a narrative too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got to turn around his narrative. Yeah, he's got his time. But uh, Giannis and you know Dame, uh, you know Lillard is is a playoff killer uh, in the past. So you know there's mm-hmm. not, there's, there is a scenario where you can envision, even though they've struggled down the stretch, that those two guys get it together. And yeah, uh, but I think it's actually more likely that they lose their first round matchup to the Pacers. Yeah, I love the Pacers. Um, they're uh, they've kind of captured my attention and heart. Since the uh, what was that in season tournament? They they made the finals. Mm. Young team. They got Siakam now. Um, I like that guy. Yeah, he's good. One of my favorite young players. Uh, and Halliburton, who is you know ready to take the next yeah. step. Yep. Uh, I don't think there's much of a scenario other than maybe the terrorist uh, uh, thing for, for them winning it all. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, is in the cards. <laughs> or you know, it doesn't have to be terrorists. It could be team planes. Yeah, um, never know. You know. Sickness. <laughs> <laughs> you could right. probably have a right. flu, stomach flu, mm. really yeah, bad. That'd be really bad. You'd need like entire teams wiped yeah, out. They all just, they all ate yeah, the I mean, same food. Um, and Cavaliers magic. Yeah, I know, right? Sometimes it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, the magic. There, there is a scenario, I guess. If it, you know, they they're so young and they're so. Um, hungry and good on defense that there is maybe, uh, but I, I can't envision again. Uh, you know, absent. An injury to to one of the Celtics mm. guys, um, them yeah. losing to to either the Cavs or Magic. 
so I really do think interesting. I mean, and then and the Knicks, of course, we can talk more about this with um, uh, Knicks expert Jack Coleman, who uh, I know is probably listening to this. He knows everything about the Knicks, but um, I don't view them as a threat. They're the number Oof. two seed. What is, is what Brunson. type of fan is Jack? <laughs> He's. <laughs> Is he? Uh, it's a bit. I was a bit tongue in cheek there. He knows virtually nothing about the Knicks. Oh, even though he's <laughs> pretending to be. Oh, casual, uh, casual. Um, <laughs> but we <laughs> we could certainly have him on. Uh, I don't view them as a threat. They're, they're the classic. I mean, Thibodeau coach teams. They usually do much better in the regular mm, season because yep. they're playing playoff level defense all yep. year long. Oh uh, yeah, he, he grinds <laughs> them down to the yeah. the meat to the and white then meat. And once the playoffs start, everybody they're else tired. is playing that defense as well. Yeah. <laughs> And they're worn out because yeah. they've been playing like that all year. Uh, yeah. I, I, although I would love to see the Knicks in the Eastern Conference final against the Celtics. I think basketball would be better for it. There's, it's been a long time since uh, the Knicks had a team even this high seated. I yeah. think. So Madison Square Garden will be absolutely jumping. I think it'll be the uh, best home court uh, in the playoffs by far. So um, I love seeing. I, them. I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the Eastern Conference Finals, but I don't think they have a chance against you know. Arguably the greatest team of all time, the twenty three, twenty four Boston. Do you hate the Knicks? No. Okay. No, they, they, they're really kind of irrelevant in in Oof. most of my. <laughs> no, they would love that <laughs> Knicks fans. Most of my sports life. I mean, yeah. I guess in the nineties, the Pat Riley era is the era they were. <clears throat> yeah. um, but during that years, the Celtics weren't good. So when the Celtics were good, the Knicks were bad, and vice versa. So okay. They really haven't had many. Mm. Um, yeah. Big matchups. I don't think they've ever played in the in the conference finals. What a legendary fight between my team and the Knicks. With the uh, Alonzo Mourning. Grabbing the leg? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Van Gundy. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. the Heat, I mean, the thing about the Heat, I, was, I heard somebody on some podcast recently talking about the Heat and saying, you know, well, they just don't have it this year. You know, they, it, it, and that's Keep exactly saying, what they were saying last year. I mean, they're yep. in the exact same spot as last year. Last year, they lost the 7-8 game. And then they, and and so they were you know about to be out of the playoffs and then they they yep. won that yep <clears throat> beat the Knicks um, uh, and uh, who they beat in the first oh they beat the Bucks then beat the Knicks yep. then beat the Celtics <laughs> it's insane so the murderers still, roll, still man. not quite over that <laughs> uh, I don't expect that to happen again and I'm definitely nah. afraid of 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 playing Miami again in the yeah. first round because I think Spo, if, man. if if the if the Celtics lose that first game it's it's it, now now Here it's we go. On. <laughs> yeah yeah. <clears throat> and now you can throw the records out the window. Yeah. Um, in the West, just going briefly, we don't want this to be you know too much of a numbers crunching podcast. Um, we're just having fun, man. <laughs> <laughs> you said that in the most casual way possible. Very believable. Uh, OKC is the number one seed. Uh, I don't know how many people believe in them, but the, you know the the, the scenario yeah. for them is that they have arrived ahead of schedule. Yeah, young young bucks. <clears throat> a lot of young players who um, are great and will be great. I'm not sure if they can be great enough to carry the day. In fact, um, whoever comes out, the, the eighth seed is going to be between uh, the Kings and New Orleans um, after last night's game. Mm. Side... Um, um, comment is, <clears throat> or as an aside, the the uh, Pelicans last night. What a what a shame that was. Zion Williamson, mm. his first ever postseason game. Although I don't know if it counts as a postseason game. Oh yeah, with the play. With the play, and I don't think it does because it was a game a few years back where Tatum had fifty or sixty, maybe even in a uh, in a playing game, and, and it didn't count for a postseason. It was like didn't count for Celtics postseason history. Oh, the the playing games are kind of their own. Yeah. They, don't, they don't even exist. The stats for it just kind of disappear. Just new shit, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it was Zion Williamson's first, at, you know, postseason, whatever, um, long awaited, and he delivered. He had 40 points uh, uh, season high last night and then hurt his hamstring with about two minutes left and had to leave the game. Um, the ultimate Zion Williamson experience, mm-hmm. really. I know, right? I, was, um, I didn't want to say it, but you yeah, said it. Yeah, it was so sad, actually, because, you know, yeah. he finally had his chance. And, and, you know, I know he is a bit of a... I don't know what the right terminology is for it. F- fatty Boombaladi. <laughs> <laughs> that's that the, it. That's the that medical the technical term. term. That's the medical term. <laughs> I didn't know you were <laughs> up one, on your medical he eats terms. He's one too many cheeseburgers. Damn. Um, you're going to be shaming the guy? I mean, he's been shamed. 
He's been shamed by everyone. He's been shamed by you. Know, you see all his, this all is his positivity. Exes. This is positivity, right. man. Well, I I could have gone harsher than <laughs> the, the boom. This is positive, Greg. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it, it, a lot of people are blaming that. Of course, his injury on that. Mm. It's a shame. I do think he's probably done. this late in the season. Come on. Well, I mean, it's probably the hardest he's played <clears throat> all okay. season long. You know, he finally is stepping it up. And his body is like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Too many jumps. We're used to being in the drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> Not a drive. Drive-thru. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, so I think it's going to be the Kings, I think, because I, I think say, Zion right, will be yeah. gone. And, and, and the Kings, uh, I, I, don't sleep on the Kings. I, I think they could beat OKC. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, we have a, a Kings fan in our... Um, Mm -hmm. NBA group, Sean yes. Cotton, shout out to him. Shout out to you, Sean. Um, so I think we have a soft spot in our hearts for the Kings. Yeah. He keeps droning on about uh, uh, Sabonis, who yeah. leads the league in triple doubles this year. Not many people would say that. Most people would think it was either Luca or... Yeah, some people uh, chase that, though. <laughs> See, shout, out already, to, shout out to Westbrook. He's already shitting on Sabonis. <laughs> shout out to Westbrook, huh? Um, Remember he was chasing that right. every game? He just gave, gave himself his own rebound. <laughs> it's incredible. Um <laughs> But so, you know, it, there is a scenario for them if Sabonis is who Sean thinks he is yeah. <laughs> and, and Fox, you know, continues playing you know, as spectacularly as he has all season long and as he did yesterday in the play-in, um, there's a chance that they could definitely beat OKC and then they'd be on the way. Um, second seed, Minnesota, kind of the same. I'm oh, sorry. Second seed is Denver. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, it's not, not not much needs to be said. Yeah, right? defending best champs, league, yeah. best player in the world. Yeah, um, they just need to kind of do what they've been doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they win it all. Yeah. Uh, um, what do you think about Dallas? Dallas and, and the Clippers with a four five matchup. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be right? super interesting because yeah. they're two kind of veteran teams that could either win the championship or flame out in four games. You know, yeah. I see both scenarios are possible for both of those teams. Um, the Clippers, obviously, they went all in with, mm -hmm. with the big three, with uh, Kawhi, Harden, George, and even Westbrook. Is, 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 is on that team. It's pretty amazing. Like the, yeah. They really are um, just going for the oldies. Yeah, the throwback. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. But there was a time, you know, there was a stretch during the season where they had put it all together and they, yeah. were, they were on their way. So um, I don't expect them to. I feel like there's an injury waiting to happen among that group. There's got to be, right? Um but I think it could. But go I good. hope not. It could go. I really good. like Kawhi Leonard's game still. Me too. Maverick, Complete same thing with, with Luca and Kyrie. <clears throat> um, you know they've been playing fantastically lately. Uh, so and they, Kyrie they, they hasn't could, even had any like flubs. I know. And I, I'm hoping there's something. I, as you know, I'm not the biggest Kyrie fan. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Tell me why. I like no, the just... jilted. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Left yeah. me at the altar. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, so I think uh, my prediction is whoever wins that 4-5, whoever comes out of that 4-5 will mm. beat uh, the Thunder. Um, and I think they'll be favored, actually, against the Thunder. Oh, wow. Uh, three seed, the Timberwolves, uh, it's you know, similar to, to uh, the Thunder in some ways. It's, you're wondering, is it too early for them? You know, with Anthony Edwards is, is going to be a superstar if he's not already. Uh, the question is whether, you know, is, is it his time yet? Mm -hmm. uh, he fe still feels like one or two seasons away for me. Yeah, but you know who knows, and you know Gobert and uh, Towns is another one. Towns is a guy who oh, thinks yeah. he's one of the five best players in the yeah, league. Yeah, so yeah. you That's know, always fun to maybe see. he is. Uh, you know, maybe he'll show it. You know, he's had flashes this year. He scored fifty, and um, so there is a path for them. I think to, you know, the path to them is for them to be as good as their record is. You know, and people are like, wow, actually, that that wasn't a, a paper champion. They were really good. Uh, sixty, the Suns, same thing. I mean, the Suns have the you know we get you get Durant. Yeah, they went all in too. Booker and Beal, um, they've been playing great down the stretch. They won seven of ten against really good teams, and and uh, they're, they're they're they must be feeling good about themselves. I think they feel they feel like they could win it. Um, so they're you know the, the ultimate wild card in this. I think similar to the four or five teams, they could go all the way or or flame out pretty quickly. Mm. Um, I kind of believe in that team, though, against the Timberwolves. If I were a betting man, I would, I mm. would take. If the, I were a betting man, if, <laughs> if I were, <laughs> you learn things about your friends. <laughs> um, seven Lakers as of last night against the Nuggets, and it's going to be a Clinched great it. first round matchup. That was last year's Western Conference Finals. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, mm. uh, you know, Lakers 
they're always there. Yeah, man. Always <laughs> you know, ready. It's going to be a great first round matchup, I hope. Still the best player in the league, man. No, just <laughs> <laughs> Who, Anthony Davis? <laughs> <laughs> Where you at on LeBron? Are you a fan? Uh, you a hater? It uh, seems like people either love him or hate him. Well, right? I used to be a hater. Um, oh. Well, just because he, 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 early on in his career, there were times when he legitimately quit on seasons in playoff games. Like, he, he just quit. Like, stopped playing. And I don't think you can be in the best of all time discussion when mm. you. When you literally have quit, there's multiple seasons where like he just kind of shut it down. Or his team was about to lose with the Cavs, and once with the Heat. <clears throat> um, but you got to give it to the guy. I mean, it's it's the yeah, twenty. It's unbelievable that he came in with the hype that he did. You know, yep. as and and has now had like a Kareem like longevity mm-hmm. stretch as well. Twenty. <laughs> so he's like, he also came in as the youngest, most hyped, and played the longest. Yep. That combination has never really been done yeah. before. So, um, yeah, he's number three all time in my uh, NBA. Oh, after list. Kareem and Mike? Larry Bird, obviously number one. Uh, and then you have Shut Jordan. Your mouth. And then, uh, <laughs> Shut your mouth. Get the fuck out of here. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're just trying to piss me off. Man. <laughs> no, <I'm, clears throat> that's, that's a discussion for another time. That's, I'm never having a discussion about Larry Bird being the best NBA player ever. Okay, in his okay. prime. Best. Better than Kareem. <laughs> Discussion for another day. Oh, uh, yeah, man. So that's it. Um, for, Shut you know, down defender Larry for, Bird. <laughs> two-time all-second team. Uh, oh, yeah, NBA, two-time yeah. second team? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Kudos it's to you, nothing. Larry. It's not nothing. It's not the nothing. 10 best defenders in the game. Mm. Well done, Larry. Um, Had nothing to do with who he was. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> uh, uh, that's that's my take on, on, on the East east and West. I, I think as the playoffs start, we can, we'll can we get more into the yeah. uh, things. But... Um, yeah, so what's left? I mean, should we have like a, like a, I don't know, like a race relations uh, discussion? <laughs> what? In this right now? Well, you can represent all black people. I can represent all white people. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm down to talk about whatever. Do you, do you, like, I've always wanted to ask you this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Go ahead. What do, do you want to ask me? Do you actively root against white basketball players like I do against black players? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Uh... No, you know what? I root against. I root against hype that mm. comes with being a good white mm. basketball player. So the answer is yes. <laughs> I root against. Yeah, or no, because then the respect comes if they live up to the hype. Yeah, but I'm, but not, they talk, have to, I'm not talking about the good players. I mean, I'm talking about like the like the the underdog. You know, like uh, here's an example that's not white. Yeah. Jeremy Lin. Yeah, remember he came out, came out, burnt, piping hot. Everybody mm-hmm. was, oh my god, Lynn Sanity took over. Yeah. I was just waiting. You're I was just... so glad it was my team that took him down to, <laughs> waiting for this bubble to burst because it was something different. Yeah. This was a great white hope thing in another package of you know mm-hmm. a person that didn't look like the typical because it's more like people just tired of seeing these black dudes with dreadlocks and shit. You know what I'm saying? That was more the attitude. And then so I root against that because there's so much stuff packed in when they do that uh, of. Jason Williams, for example, that they called yeah. white chocolate because yeah. of the way he played. It was just like, yeah. I didn't root against him. I liked it. I liked that he played with the pizzazz, the difference of him. But uh, What's interesting for me is I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm racist, but more like nationalist when it comes to basketball because I, I root for the white American players, uh, you know, because, because they tend to be much, you know, underdogs. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since the seventies when the league kind of <laughs> yeah. flipped. Yeah. Uh, but but now that there's so many white European players, I'm not down. With, I'm not. I don't yeah. know this guy for some reason. I don't. I don't and they them. brought they brought this flop into the league, <laughs> and it really bothers yeah. me. So the white Europeans, or uh, uh, I guess uh, what black Europeans are there? But white Euro, I guess what uh, Giannis. <laughs> Giannis, and he'd be flopping too. Yeah. So they, uh, I don't like the the style of play normally that comes with the European players. Mm. I like a hard nose. Like that's like the white players I could rock with. Are like the hard nosed guys. Like I liked Birdman, I liked uh, I liked Lambeer. You know what I'm saying? I like that dude. The worker. I've always liked the worker player. Anyway, yeah. I was a big uh, uh, Horace Grant. I liked him when everybody was talking about Jordan and Pippen. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, what about the guy getting the rebounds? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that white dude I like. But when there's a white dude that's got some pizzazz or some soul to him, yeah. they just hype the shit out of him, and I just like roll my eyes. Okay. So you are a bit racist when it comes to basketball. No. That's what I'm getting at. No, I, don't, I wouldn't say racist. <laughs> I'd say I am aware of what's happening too, with man. the media. <laughs> and it bothers me. <laughs> All right, last thing. We need to name this podcast before we, uh, before we, before we stop. 
I think something with positivity has got to be in it. I don't know, man. It feels like and a little... Nobody uh, listen? <laughs> <laughs> Positive? I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, <laughs> hooping it. <laughs> Mr. Hooper? What was, wasn't there a show? Hanging with Mr. Hooper. <laughs> Hanging hang with Mr. Hoopers. I think... Uh, uh, hoop, there it is. Man. We're proving that we're both dads. I yeah, I know. The fact that you're no, saying I, it I and think, I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. No, I think um well, I don't know, you probably know more than I do about like this, you know, search engine optimization, but if we, if we called it something like, you know, the the number one NBA podcast in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you could, uh, can, that, can we do that? I, we could. I'm and, sure there might, if it then, doesn't exist. And then it'll it'll show up, right? When people when people. Google. I don't think anybody would search for that. Well, that's what I've been searching but, for. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably. Com. You don't want to put your name on it. I, I'm I'm just saying. I think it'd be really funny if we named it the number one NBA podcast in the world, and just put it in quotes. And then we, and then I could say I'm the host of the number one NBA podcast. In the world. <laughs> How about Greg Poehler's number one ah, NBA I don't podcast? I don't need my no, name. then it, you would really be. I don't need my name. Okay, so uh, number one NBA podcast in the world. I yeah. like it. It's good, right? And then, and the, you know, the best thing about that about that is it's is it's aspirational as well. Yeah, that's like, the goal. There and could we'll be a see. time a year from now. Think about this: when we are the number one NBA podcast in the world, and we get to take away the quotes. <laughs> <laughs> that's our goal. <laughs> Every episode we start with, our goal is to remove the quotes. <laughs> what can we do to be yeah. the number one NBA? So I don't know how this works. Do we need to like set up social media stuff? Like this is where it's <sighs> dreadful at. Like because uh, it's because it's, it's nothing sadder than like setting up a, a Twitter account and having like two followers or something. You know, it's like uh, I guess you have to do that. But I, I, I guess if, if anybody's Not listening Twitter. or watching this, if you if you see anything related to this show on my social media, Greg Polar at Twitter or X. Uh, or John, what, do you, what do you, where are you at? I'm on all of it. Uh, John Rollins, what's your, what's your handle? Oh, John Farrar Van Dam on Twitter. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and on uh, everything else, John DeRollins. Yeah. Um, so we'll try to f- hopefully set something up. So, you know, but uh, th- hopefully you enjoyed what you saw here. At, uh, yeah, or at, heard. On the number one NBA podcast, podcast in, in the, the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um, can, uh, yeah. And, and we're, and... I think it's also you're definitely giving something different. It's a different um, coming from a maybe, different angle. Maybe definitely we're two Americans living outside of the country, mm. watching basketball at two o'clock in the morning. That's right. We'll, we'll definitely be the most tired of all the podcasts. Good. Hey, that's another angle. If you don't want to do the one, number one, the red eye NBA. <laughs> the red eye. Red eye has a weird connotation for me. Either we're high. <laughs> 420 is this weekend. <laughs> huh? I was thinking more of the asshole. Damn, why's your asshole red? <laughs> I never heard it called the red eye. I've heard brown eye. Uh, well, yours is <laughs> <laughs> You're assuming now, Greg. <laughs> We'll, right. we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll we might go out. with the Thank number one. Thank everybody for listening to this uh, or watching it. Uh, I don't even know how we do this. But um, hey, this is for me. Like, whatever we like, want, Like man. we said, the free this is just scratching an itch because I've always wanted to. I love to talk basketball. Yeah. I like hanging out with you. Did you uh, feel the, the, the itch was scratched? Uh, <laughs> with this episode, did, did you feel I fulfilled? Feel, yeah, sure. Sure. I would have liked to have talked more Celtics, to be honest. How? Like what? <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here I and really be your do sounding think this board. Team is be the, I mean, I, okay, I believe that. But this, this isn't a Celtics wow, podcast. He was right. That was one of the greatest teams ever assembled. I this isn't a Celtics podcast. No matter what happens. Okay, sixteen and zero. Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, maybe we'll get some guests on um, Celtics related <laughs> over the course. <laughs> Of the, of the playoffs but we'll check back in maybe weekly um, as these playoffs are, are going on and um, and give our takes and uh, yeah thanks for watching thank you <laughs> <laughs>